here I am again, watching a video about a phone I can't afford. It is a post I often see in the comments section of this channel. But it's true, isn't it? Not being able to afford something has never stopped anyone from wanting to know more. Whether that be about a luxury vacation spot or a fancy sports car. And for many of us, that also applies to the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2, one of the most expensive smartphones that you can buy today, but also one of the most interesting. So whether you're here today, maybe just interested, or if you're lucky enough to afford one, then join me as we take a look at what could possibly be the most important phone of 2020. Hi, I'm Michael Josh. You're watching Gadget Match. This is our Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 review. I get it. Anyone willing to spend this much on a smartphone will want to make sure that it's durable. And the good news is, on its second iteration, Samsung has done everything to make this phone tough. Eight cam mechanisms make up this new and improved hinge, so you can open it up to any angle and it stays put. You couldn't do this on the original Fold. And like on the Z Flip, there are sweeper brushes that keep dirt out. The screen is made of ultra-thin glass, a composite of glass and plastic, with a screen protector pre-installed on top of it. This screen protector can be removed or replaced, but Samsung says, let them do it for you. For a limited time, the company also offers a one-time screen replacement for a reduced $150 fee during your first year of use. When folded shut, there's still a noticeable gap between the two displays, but these ramp-like accents have been added to minimize this. Magnets on the device keep it shut and give you that satisfying thump when you snap it closed. And then there's something to be said about the brushed metal finish and design cues taken from the Note 20 Ultra. Overall, the Fold 2 feels more classy, premium, and feels much sturdier than the first Fold. And once you get over that iffy feeling of folding a display in half, and start using it on the regular, you then learn to start trusting the phone and its durability. That said, treat it with caution. Like going to the beach might not be a good idea. Imagine sand caught in the middle of this display. No, no. And when it starts to rain, you might want to put the phone away because it doesn't have an IP rating. I've been reviewing a couple of foldable phones lately and I can't help but feel giddy about exploring new ways of doing things on new devices. And while the Fold 2 and Microsoft Surface Duo are obviously smartphones, I've found myself having to approach these reviews differently because these are inherently a new breed of devices and both require that you adopt a new way of thinking and doing things. The Fold 2 offers a different form factor, unlike any other Samsung smartphone today. It's tall and narrow and thick, almost like a Nokia communicator back in the day. A part of me wishes that when folded, it would resemble a typical smartphone, just like Huawei's Mate XS does. That said, the good news is, the entire front or cover display, as Samsung calls it, is now all screen. Unlike the original Fold that only had a tiny window for quick tasks. While not quite what we're used to, the screen is big enough to scroll through your Twitter or Instagram feed, chat with friends, even read and reply to emails. Anything that has to do with typing or texting is definitely much more comfortable on a wider device, but it's still very doable on the Fold nonetheless. Of course, because of its unique aspect ratio, some things might look squished, but for the most part, you'll be able to do everything on this display satisfactorily. In fact, I challenged myself to use only the cover display for a full day, and I survived without feeling like my experience was restricted. That experience, however, made me appreciate the fact that the Fold opens up to be a tablet, offering multiple ways of doing things. And that, my friends, is our cue to open it up. Isn't that a beauty? This, by the way, is an exclusive Gadget Match wallpaper that you can download from gadgetmatch.com slash wallpapers. I'm so happy that Samsung removed that ugly selfie camera module that got in the way of what would have otherwise been a pretty awesome tablet experience. 
that's been addressed on the Fold 2 with only a punch hole selfie camera sticking out. Something that you'll get used to and when you do will fade away into the background. I love being able to start an app on the cover display and pick up where I left off on the inner display. For it to work the other way around though, you'll need to go into settings and select which apps you want to enable. I get it, shutting it closed should mean the same thing when I slam down my laptop when someone walks by. I don't want you to see what I'm working on. I'm also always asked about the crease. It's there, you can feel it, and in certain angles, see it also. But when the device is in front of you, like you normally would have it, it's not as obvious. And again, it doesn't distract from the experience. I've seen a lot of strong worded comments about it, but guys, it's not that big of a deal as some of you think. And if you really want a foldable display, then you'll have to live with a crease until the technology becomes better. The larger display is great for a lot of things. Things I enjoy doing on my iPad, reading books on my Kindle app, comics using Marvel Unlimited, or the September issue of Vogue on Zinio. This larger screen is great for reading of any kind. It also comes in handy for viewing the desktop versions of web pages. Sometimes you need to, like that one time when I needed to cram my German lessons in the car and Gotha's online learning platform required a desktop browser. The screen was big enough to accommodate that. Google Maps is so much better with an even bigger screen. Meanwhile, since videos are usually wide, you're not necessarily getting a bigger screen for movies. If you take away those black bars, Disney's Mulan on the Fold 2 is roughly the same size as on the Note 20 Ultra. Netflix and Disney Plus will let you pinch out to fill the screen, but expect a crop. Most games, on the other hand, will stretch to fit, but not everything is optimized for this aspect ratio yet. And speaking of games, the Fold 2 is packed with enough power to handle any of them. When my Fold 2 arrived, I bought a little stand for it, thinking I'd be able to use that bigger screen for playing games using Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. But just like movies, as console games are designed for a wide screen, this larger display doesn't mean a big screen gaming experience. Of course, one of the benefits of a bigger display is multitasking. And I firmly believe that true multitasking is the holy grail for mobile devices. It's a bit tricky though in the Android world as Android isn't optimized for tablets, neither is it optimized for dual screens. So Samsung has had to build the functionality itself. With one app open, swipe in from this floating tab to bring up Apps Edge, and from there, select the second app you'd like to use. You can use them side by side. For this layout, I like to have my favorite chat app open on one window and whatever it is I'm working on on the other, reading a news article or checking on some emails. Or for example, while writing the script, I kept the Fold 2's spec sheet open on Chrome while I wrote the script on the other. You can also have apps open on top of each other, which is ideal for watching a video while doing something else. You can, if you want to, open a third window or have it open as a floating window in pop-up view. But that's asking a lot of this screen size. Now, remember when I said that Android isn't optimized for tablets and dual screens and Samsung has had to build this functionality itself? This means most Android apps aren't optimized for it either. Most apps will either take up the entire display, but not really make the most of that extra screen real estate. Samsung lets you go in and tell certain apps that you're using a tablet so that when held this way, Gmail or Outlook, for example, will list your emails on one side and the email you're perusing on another. On the flip side, there are apps like Facebook, which is just meh in the middle. Some apps refuse to work in split screen mode, like shocker, Instagram. There's also supposed to be drag and drop functionality, but it only works between Microsoft Office apps or the Gallery app and Samsung's own messaging app. But this isn't a Samsung problem. It's an Android problem. And hopefully as more devices like the Fold 2 become commercially available, more developers become incentivized to rethink the way their apps work on the devices of tomorrow. The Galaxy Fold 2 has three 12 megapixel cameras, an ultra-wide, wide, and 2x telephoto lens. 
As with any of our reviews, we did some comparisons. First, with its predecessor. In my tests, they performed the same using the ultra-wide angle lens, whether it was an architectural shot or a portrait shot directly against the sun. But where the improvements are really evident is when it comes to night mode and low light performance. I shot this next photo in a really dark room with night mode. You'll find that the photo from the Fold 1 is much more noisier than on the Fold 2. I've also compared it to the Note 20 Ultra, arguably one of Samsung's best camera phones today. In broad daylight, there's hardly a difference between the Fold and the Note 20 in both wide and ultra-wide shots. Although in this portrait of Chai taken close to sunset, you'll find the Note did a better job at bringing out the blues of the skies. It was also kinder on her face, although both did a good job at cutouts. This next example with super shallow depth of field was taken as the sun had almost completely set. Both phones did an equally good job, which I guess is the point here. The Fold is a pretty darn good camera phone also. This one's always tricky, photographing people at night. Chai kept still and we used night mode. Both photos are Instagram worthy, but if you zoom in close on Chai's face, the notes photo has more detail. This next one was tough for me to take as it started raining and I didn't want the fold to get wet. Completely unrelated, but here's where an IP rating would have come in handy. The Note 20 Ultra produces the brighter photo, but trust me, many other phones I had that night it didn't take as good a photo as the fold did. And finally, an extreme low light scene from my bathroom. The Fold did a good job considering there was hardly any light to work with, but the Note 20 Ultra brought out more colors in the scene and is a cleaner and brighter photo overall. All right, enough comparisons. Why don't you just sit back and enjoy a few more photos so that you can fully appreciate what the Galaxy Z Fold 2's camera can do. By the way, the Fold 2 has two selfie cameras, one on the cover display and the other over here on the inside. They're there for face unlock and so that you can take a video call either way. But when it comes to taking selfies, my recommendation is to use the cover screen as a monitor. Just tap here to turn on the cover screen preview, raise your palm to trigger your shutter and click. There, much better. With its large screen, second display, and fast refresh rate, one might think that the Fold 2 is power hungry. But on the contrary, it isn't. In my two weeks of use, its battery did a decent job of lasting me a full day of moderate use. Charging times are okay too with its bundled 25 watt adapter. 45% in 30 minutes, 85 in 60, and a full charge in one hour and 25. With Samsung's optional 45 watt charger, however, speeds are even faster. And just in case you're wondering, the phone also supports wireless charging. And here are what charging speeds are like with Samsung's 15 watt fast charger. Before we wrap up, it's time for Quickfire Q&A. At Gear Diary asks, is it worth $2,000? If you think about it, probably not. But what you're paying for is a premium for that early access to tech that's not really ready for mainstream just yet. At jblair82, would you spend your own money on it? I already have. I've ordered mine in Mystic Black with a custom blue hinge. Speaking of hinge customizations, that's available as an option in these countries. Alvin asks, are the stereo speakers as loud as the S20? Actually, much louder. Kim, would you use this as your main device? I'd consider it. So, is the Galaxy Z Fold 2 your gadget match. It's hard to recommend a $2,000 smartphone to anyone, unless you're one of those people who have lots of money to spend on expensive hobbies. The Fold 2 is a luxury device meant for those who want the finer things in life, early adopters who get a high from using tech on the bleeding edge, and techies like many of my friends and I who just have to have it. That said, if you've been excited about the Fold since it was first teased more than a year ago, 
what it is today is already a superb refinement of the original. It's built well, more durable, performs great, and for the most part, gets the job done. The hardware is ready. Now, all we need is for the platform to catch up. That said, I truly believe that this is a step forward toward a new kind of mobile computing. It might not make sense now, but what I have in my hands is the best glimpse of what the future might look like. And that was our Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 review. What do you think of the phone? And is it a phone that you'd like to use? Let me know by signing off in the comments section below. As always, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon, please. We have a lot of videos coming our way. And by hitting that notification bell, you will be notified first. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.